So we'll kick this session to talk about the current controversies of Carnatic music and everything that has happened in probably the last one year mm -hmm. uh, relating to the caste, the domination of the Brahmin community. Let's not beat around the bush. And uh, uh, trust me, I know the politics of Tamil Nadu, right? Uh, and if there is anyone who has resolutely written against, condemned the uh, what I frankly call as a Nazi rhetoric about a community, mm -hmm. I have done that consistently. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, every community, there are no saints and there are sins on every part of the community. Mm -hmm. uh, technically speaking, I belong to a what is called an upper caste community. Mm -hmm. So I know what happens in my family circles, how they speak about others. So mm -hmm. I know about all this. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, I also come from a certain background where it's a mixed heritage of Hindu and Christian. So I have seen bigotry all around. Right. And I have seen generosity all around. True. So there are no saints here. At the same time, not everyone is quintessentially a sinner mm -hmm. or a villain without redemption. That is also inhuman outlook. Mm -hmm. And to tar a community is not the intention. Mm -hmm. But from a societal perspective, we have to talk about, mm -hmm. okay, the criticism that comes is that the community dominates this and has good happened out of it, yes. If we accept that, then we also have to accept that there could be something else that didn't happen because of the domination. And of course, your article about, as we were just talking and we missed in the recording a bit about the All is Well and the title that the newspaper chose to give it was All is Well. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about, yes, there is, there are, what you deem as acceptable social aspects of music as art, what do you deem as music's political message that is acceptable? And from my side, I'll say this, when I say political messaging and stuff, I always talk about like a Nina Simone singing, mm -hmm. God Down Mississippi, or mm -hmm. telling black students, I'm here for you, gifted, young and black. Mm -hmm. That is the politicization I'm talking about. I'm not talking about Democratic, Republican, Congress right. Party, BJP, right. none of that politics. Right. Politics as how it relates to a society. Yes, so my my suggestion to that word actually itself is it should be more treated as socialization of art than as politicization of art. Because politicization really sends the wrong signals. So I would rather say that it's a socialization of art, which I think many of the greatest composers in Carnatic music have consistently uh, been you know, part of. If you take Purandar Dasak, he talks so much about social evils. Tyagaraja talks about it. Uthagar Venkatakavi talks about it. Mm -hmm. And courageous people, people like Subramani Bhartiyar and all that have gone a step ahead. But the Ayurveda made it a point to tell the king that he won't sing about a human being. Yes, he made a point of that. But at the same time, if that human being mm -hmm. uh, inspired him, mm -hmm. he, has cited, he has cited people like Bhadra Chala Ramadas in his mm -hmm. compositions. Mm -hmm. So he wouldn't artificially do it for... Understood. Narasthudi is different yes. from... Yes. Or with an agenda, mm -hmm. so that's that's what he was against. But then there are several other things he he talks about. You know, he actually dismisses sacrifices and rituals and all. Of that. course. So those kind of socialization, a lot of people have used music as a tool for. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. Second thing, coming to this, all is well kind of thing. That was not my heading, by the way, mm -hmm. because the rest of the article actually deals with things which are well as well as things which can be improved mm. okay and even today if you simply scan youtube the, mm -hmm. there is no connect between the title and what the content is mm -hmm. many times the titles yes. are given so sensationally just to lure you in but actually the content is quite opposite of what is being given as a title. yes mm -hmm. exactly when i said uh, that things are not as bad as they are being claimed to be okay and for things to go better mm -hmm. A lot has to be done. In fact, I believe in what I call as the action talk ratio. Mm -hmm. A healthy action talk ratio of about 85 to 15 mm -hmm. or 90 to 10 should be there. Okay. So if we are going to talk about a subject, we should really have dirtied our hands and we should have muddied our 
hands, mm -hmm. got into the arena, gone to the grassroots, appreciated what he's involved in the process before we talk about it. Mm -hmm. In other words, it takes about 10 seconds to talk about something, but it takes about 10 years to actually do something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, when we say that it's ideal for people from all communities to mm -hmm. know, perform a particular system of music, whether it is Carnatic or Villipata or Bangla dance, let's oh, yeah. say, overtly, no Punjabi is going to come and tell a Sri Lankan can't become a Bangla dancer. Yes, but it's... But whether the Sri Lankan is going to choose to become a Bangla dancer is a is a very important consideration. Mm -hmm. So, now, there are certain communities which may not choose to be Villapattu singers. Yes. By natural process of evolution, there is nothing, no conspiracy, nothing happening over there. By choice, some people take to it more. By choice, some people take to jazz more. By choice, some people take to Carnatic uh, more. This is one part of the game because this is a multi-headed problem. So yeah. Now, for example, if I am the guru mm -hmm. and I can speak with first-hand experiences, there are literally thousands of gurus who are poorer than you know, some of the performing artists. Mm -hmm. That guru who is actually going to be a full-time guru mm -hmm. will not look at where the money is coming from, where the fees is coming from. Sure. If a person is from any community, if that person mm -hmm. is willing to pay, they will teach. In mm -hmm. fact, a lot of gurus have done that at all times because it's simple economics for them. Mm -hmm. They cannot afford to be playing caste politics over there, number one. Okay? And I've known this. Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of gurus, in fact, their main bread uh, when yes, used please. to come from Chetiar families. Mm. You know? But uh, we have also, as I am not Brahmin, and I'll tell you there are a few others who have shared their stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, there is some, uh, the gurus have a way of, while well, they'll accept the payment, that the, there are taunts. And there are subtle ways of making a student feel uh, small about for lacking a background. There, there are certain pushbacks. Uh, oh, I'll tell you the truth. These also happen. No. The real gurus mm -hmm. will not care who you are. Mm -hmm. I've oh, seen... Yes. You're talking I've about seen, a person who considers no, no. teaching as a... No, 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 no. I've seen Brahmin kids come crying from the class because the guru doesn't want to hear the genuine part of it. These kind of taunts happen to everyone. There is nothing, there is nothing community intended in that in most cases. I wouldn't speak about the exceptions. Okay, exceptions will be there in everything. But in most cases, Brahmin students have got extremely taunted, crucified. Even, even yesterday or the day before, there was mm -hmm. a person who was coming and telling me uh, how a non-Brahmin guru mm -hmm told a Brahmin student mm -hmm. uh, that, okay, that, that student actually said, uh, I'm not able to understand this. Either if you don't understand, why are you coming to think? Mm -hmm. So this is nothing to do with caste or community. It is just that that guru happened to mm -hmm. be this and the student happened to be but a But some of the comments can, uh, of course, this is also the problem I see certainly between the Indian versus the U.S. environment now in the U.S. environment. We talk a lot about sensitive comments, mm -hmm. whether it is office or elsewhere. Uh, you cannot tell an uh, African-American colleague something that you can easily tell a white colleague. Mm -hmm. uh, it will become an HR. We are still not yet onto that conversation level. So when uh, you may have told a person, but I have not so far. You, uh, not, not you. Not you. Uh, yes, I can tell yes. you that I have been told that by my father. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but somebody can interpret it as, no, wait a minute, are you telling me that because my lineage doesn't come from this? Yeah. This, this interpretation is always, a, the, it's not going to happen tomorrow. But no, that the possibility is always there. But then see, uh, that interpretation, if you want to start happening, uh, you know, mm -hmm. if you want to go there, it doesn't have to do anything with caste at all. It doesn't have to do anything with caste. Now, for example, if my father was in a class with four people mm -hmm. and he told this to say my younger brother, my younger brother may feel that he's favoring me over him. So this is, it doesn't have to do anything with anything actually. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, now when that discourse is happening on caste, all this seems to be propping up in a big way. 
this said i am not speaking up for all the individuals involved in gurukulam or sabhas mm-hmm. so you no know, there could be exceptions to whatever i am saying but similarly if i were to actually say most of the sabhas from what i have seen and what uh, what mm-hmm. is real real economics if a artist is drawing crowds if the artist is bringing money to them ultimately they will feature the person provided he is singing acceptable carnatic music in the terms of in the eyes of the critics also in the eyes of the peers and critics now if you are if your peers accept you and the critics accept you as a good artist in carnatic and the audience is actually are fulfilled in that particular mm-hmm. way then they are called sometimes even lighter artists are now called uh, to perform in the sabhas if mm-hmm. they are good draws so they do not care about that to at least 80 to 90% they will not care about that because ultimately the economics of the sabha is such that they do not make enough money most of them do not make enough money so whatever opportunity mm-hmm. that they can make money they will do that it is in their interest to do that so the cause doesn't come too much over there what is reality un- unfortunately is that even until recent times Mm-hmm. there were people from all communities who were part of the system you know they they in fact i have always argued that carnatic owes itself to the contributions of people from diverse communities mm-hmm. it is it would not be what it is without the contributions of them mm-hmm. i'll tell you number of vocalists that you see in this hall of fame mm-hmm. here a number of them have been influenced by nadasaram mm-hmm. it's not because rajaratnam was twice as good as another person mm-hmm. it's just that the instrument itself the, the style the, and so many mridangis have been influenced by tamil so all these things have enriched our uh, culture as much mm-hmm. and everybody would of course be the first to salute the devadasi community for preserving the majority of the music system not only dance if the music is today what it is from the composers it, it was to veena dhanamal who did it because she was the one who preserved everything right from ariyakudi maharaj punavishwana there mushri subramanya samangudi shrinivas there madhure mane and ramnat krishna and ms subalakshmi i mean of course not she but so mm-hmm. many of them mm-hmm. went to the dhanamal school to learn of course ms mm-hmm. also went by the way mm-hmm. but the point i'm trying to make here is that everybody acknowledges the contributions of all these people in fact it was considered uh, rebellious for a dk patamal to actually come and start singing carnatic music because brahmins uh, ladies especially were not allowed oh, yeah, to sing carnatic yeah, yeah. before yeah. so today what has happened is because of the advent of films and so many other things that's happening a lot of misconception has come about in the field that this is more elitist it's not accessible to a lot of castes a lot of communities so because of that kind of a perception a lot of people are not taking to it mm-hmm. they actually think that it's not even fashionable in the first place a lot of the communities unfortunately start thinking like that mm-hmm. and even those who actually come and learn i have trained and presented students from various communities and i know that talent has no caste okay mm-hmm. it really doesn't and i believe that i also proved this in my own social experiments mm-hmm. so i have been championing this whole thing that you know mm-hmm. uh, at least a few million children should be given opportunities to learn and based on their own passion and talent and if it taught mm-hmm. properly even some of the most difficult ragas like carnatic uh, like sahana yadukula kambodi mm-hmm. this kind of ragas are also accessible to people from any caste that's why when i went to a corporation school in 1992 or something mm-hmm. in adayar my experiment was very simple the school had 800 students i asked the headmaster to find out from the school take a survey mm-hmm. and see how many of them wanted to learn music Mm-hmm. So 160 of them wanted to. And the results mm-hmm. of my survey are still mm-hmm. mm-hmm. well documented by my foundation, the International mm-hmm. Foundation. So of the 160, we interviewed each one of them personally, and I found that 93 of the 160. So I took another musician with me. Mm-hmm. So you know, a bunch of us went and we interviewed. So 93 out of 160 had basic music attitude mm-hmm. from the standards of say mm-hmm. I think probably from fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. Mm-hmm. Okay. So in other words you are talking about 60% of the people who wanted to learn music out of probably what 20% of the mm-hmm. school strength so this is what is the equation basically mm-hmm. so even if you were to simply simplistically say 50% of 20% so you are talking about 10% of the people in a school mm-hmm. who have the aptitude and 
It is multiplied, you know, extrapolated to the rest of the schools mm -hmm. in the country. You are literally talking about millions and millions and millions of students who have basic attitude towards music. Sure. So this is as strong a stat as possible that needs to be hey, We addressed. see that here, like my daughter and all the students who go to school, mm -hmm. they have the band practices and mm -hmm. uh, when we attend the annual concert, of course, we see some 70, 80 kids performing, right? Of course, not all of them are going to go to become a concert pianist. Exactly. So now, if you're looking at 10% of population from every school in India, mm -hmm. which has basic aptitude, and you are taking, assuming that even one out of thousand in that is going on to become a good artist, and probably about 10 out of thousand become average, above average artists, mm -hmm. another 50 become teachers, the rest of them, at least a sizable percentage will become good listeners. Mm -hmm. So this is the only way to make the music completely broad based, solve these problems, make the thing completely more, you know, uniform mm -hmm. and just think, or give opportunities, give opportunities, give good training and do it at a macro level properly for some time. And then automatically they will get opportunities in all the sabas the, 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 over a period of time because more stake will come from all the community holders to attend the concerts. See, the stake right now, the stakeholders have to be also broad based. Mm -hmm. Everything has to be created. The stake has to be created. Without creating all this coming and making fashionable media statements is not the solution at all. And that is not actually called, uh, you know, addressing the issue or something. Because to address the issue, if you really go into it only, you will know how much is involved in this. Mm -hmm. When I did this project, when I first wrote to Chennai Corporation, I know what a struggle it was for the corporation to even respond to me, my mm -hmm. mails. Because it, it all takes time. If the, if the top is okay with it, the bureaucracy is not okay. If the bureaucracy is okay, somebody at the top you, is... You're also content. fighting a certain perception here, right? Mm -hmm. Because uh, unlike the Western education system, which lays an emphasis on liberal arts, mm -hmm. Uh, we are very utilitarian when it comes to knowledge. If you can tie mm -hmm. economic progress and revenue to a knowledge, we will learn it. Well, Your yeah. perception problem is that a corporation official or whatever, what good does it do to learn music while the student should be learning math and geometry? But yeah, but, but actually, see, that's, that's one side at the broad base for the mm -hmm. whole school. I'm mm -hmm. not even talking the whole school. Mm -hmm. I'm only talking about the 10% who want to learn mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and who have the aptitude. So we are not even talking about imposing music on the entire lot for them to sure. do this thing. But unless you are really giving opportunities to those who are talented and passionate, mm -hmm. you are actually depriving them of their livelihood. Mm -hmm. You are depriving them of their potential income. You are depriving the whole country of economic success coming out of the opportunities that you are giving to these mm -hmm. people at this right stage. So in other words, this is very economically uh, significant thing that the government has to do. And you mentioned Columbia and others. I would say that even the middle school, no, the, yeah, 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 the yeah. macro programs for music education, art education, orchestra, all this that's happening in this country is what needs to be replicated in India. Many times it is the communities that you are addressing. They are themselves not for it. Unfortunate reality. Now, for example, when I did this camp for 31,000 rural children mm -hmm. across Tamil Nadu, that program was a part of multiple intelligence skills development. Mm -hmm. So where handicraft, so many other things were taught. And I personally went to some of the schools uh, mm -hmm. when this three-day camp was happening. I went to Madurai district, I think, mm -hmm. or Koyamath or something. So I went and I looked at the children and should look at the bubbling passion that they had and the talent that they had, the raw talent that they had. It was like literally it brought me to tears mm -hmm. you know that level but there today the person that i met there was a seven standard kid who had written a poetry and an eight standard kid who had set in mm -hmm. music they came and showed it to me they wanted to show it to me they, when they did this i was like absolutely stunned mm -hmm. today that person may be some orange vendor in some street actually because he has been denied that opportunity by the system the system is capable of literally making a difference of millions of lives mm -hmm. but the system is not doing it because the next year what happened to that program of mine 
Mm-hmm. Even a school was so fascinated by this program, the success of it, mm-hmm. that they spontaneously contacted my foundation and offered me a $50,000 grant. Mm-hmm. I never even wrote to them. Mm-hmm. They unfortunately gave the money to the Tamil Nadu government to okay. facilitate the thing. Mm-hmm. And it just went there, that's it. The, the official who had mm-hmm. replaced the previous year's official in that particular mm-hmm. place just did not let the project happen. Mm-hmm. And this is the same official who is from the communities that we are trying to address in these schools. Mm-hmm. Unfortunate that he didn't see the the actual beauty of the thing, the upliftment mm-hmm. or the, the opportunities. Mm-hmm. For that so many children would have enjoyed had he been uh, just signing one document. Mm-hmm. We literally went from pillar to post, did all these things. And you know, he just let so much time pass. He never refused to sign, mm-hmm. but he was just stalling along. You were just stalling. Stalling. And uh, so much so that UNESCO finally got uh, pretty miffed about the way in which the of project course. was not happening. So Tamil Nadu government finally returned the money back to UNESCO. It is. And so the political will, the bureaucratic will Mm -hmm. for it all to, you know, coalesce into a proper symphony for this to happen for children is what is going to make a difference. Mm -hmm. Talking about it or doing individual projects or me even training, say, Mm -hmm. 20 children from different things will all be starting points. It's good, good to, you know, have the conversation going somewhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, get some headlines here and there, but for it to make a proper difference, the macro system has to fall in place. And this is what I have been telling. I was in the Prime Minister's committee, mm-hmm. the previous government's uh, committee for music education in schools. I was the only musician in that mm-hmm. in the whole country. And at that time, they asked me to set up a syllabus for classes one to eight, mm-hmm. and I did that promptly. And uh, so far, I'm sure that it's lying somewhere in some. So this part of what you're saying, right, this whole perspective that you're giving, unfortunately, I didn't get that perspective from two of your articles. One was this All Is Well, and the other one is what you wrote for, I think, Outlook magazine. Mm -hmm. It almost bordered on for me. I'm like, is he denial? Is he in denial? But it looks like you were coming at it from a different perspective, which I think was not sufficiently fleshed out in your article. Probably the word count or word editing and play, yeah. uh, editing other things come into play, but also see everything can't be explained in every article because that that other points are made in some other articles. Okay. For example, there was an article that I was I, I was asked to write uh, for the 60th year of India's independence or something between awesome. Hindu, mm-hmm. some op-ed mm-hmm. page or front page or something I wrote. Mm-hmm. So I I did address some of these issues over there. Okay. But I've always consistently mentioned that the macro systems of cultural and art education that you see in mm-hmm. self-respecting countries yes. has to be replicated in India. If we cannot instill pride and passion for our own culture in our country at the macro level with a proper policy, education policy, mm-hmm. we are not going to be able to bind the country together. Culture is the strongest glue that can actually bind a country together. This one is about the huge furore that happened last September mm-hmm. about the Carnatic music and the Christian community. Okay. Right, uh, whatever that happened, right? And the disclaimer here, and for anyone who watches, m- many people, of course, in the Facebook world and others know that I have a Christian heritage, right? My father is Christian, mm-hmm. my mother not so. Okay. And I don't consider myself a Christian, not just because. I think it's an insult to my father, who was a simple, devout Christian to the last of his breath. Mm-hmm. Regular church choir, read the Bible, lived by certain principles, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I am more of, I have a certificate. Yes, there is some religion has to be there on the certificate. Yeah. It is there. And then, yes, I observe Christmas. I go to church on a Christmas day. But beyond that, what do I do? It's like uh, you don't become a Hindu just because you burst crackers on Diwali. Yeah. Why did such a furor happen? It was almost it was the and it was coming close on the heels of the Andar controversy. Mm-hmm. Uh, earlier was the Andar controversy with Vairamuthu, and then happened the Carnatic music controversy. It was unbelievable furor mm-hmm. 
from a community that was largely perceived as docile, tolerant, yeah. and elastic. Yeah. Something changed. Mm. And of course, one part of this is because the marginalization of Brahmins from political discourse and the vilification mm. by the Dravidian parties mm. pushed them into the Hindutva fringe element mm. where they have become assertive is okay. They have become militant. Mm. And they feel that they are freshly empowered mm. and a whole blowback happened. And that is when I read your article, uh, Don't Crucify the Artists. Right. Even amongst what I would call well-meaning artists, like you and a few others, there are a few things that I often saw, there are two statements repetitively. Yeah. And the, so one, music transcends religion, let's not ghettoize it. Two, the uh, argument about conversions. Right. Everyone made a point about, oh, I'm not against conversions. It has to be organic. And people were finagling around or tiptoeing around the topic of conversions. Right. I felt both were unfair. Number one, music is rooted in a culture and a society. We cannot divorce it from the ground. Mm -hmm. So while Carnatic music can be called a Hindu music or a music that was rooted in Hindu ethos, you could call it anything. And equally, and then suddenly the names of Abraham Panditar and a few others started coming out. These were names that were always well known within the Carnatic music fraternity. I don't think you need anyone to tell you about Abraham Panditar. And then a few others and then so on and so forth. So even if it was Hindu music, even if it was so, was it wrong for the Christians to take that music? No, that's what, see, I don't think personally that there is nothing, there is anything wrong with anyone taking whatever they like from mm -hmm. anywhere. So, you know, it's all, it all boils to the, in, boils down to the intent, right? So the intent is artistic, you know, fascinated by something. Today I played, uh, mm -hmm. So, it is. Mm -hmm. so tomorrow if I were to play some gospel song or something, mm -hmm. if my intent is just artistic and something, you know that I find beautiful, I simply want to try it out as a thing, then it's not wrong. But if, they, if I'm going to be the tool of somebody else who is asking me to do something and then I'm doing it for them and then I'm getting paid in the process, there is some other agenda happening behind that, then it's questionable. I mean, it may not be wrong from a professional standpoint because I'm earning money from that. But you know, people may question that you sold your soul to the for just pennies or whatever. <laughs> so Twenty pieces of silver. What exactly for some silver? So, mm. so it's a question of perception. Yeah, I don't know if you got the metaphor. The Thirty pieces of silver is a metaphor referring to Judas. Oh, for Judas, okay. Fine. Because Judas apparently right. betrayed Christ, Christ for, for thirty, 30 pieces, pieces of silver. silver. Okay, so there we are. Right. Now, for example, I you know worked with the Wisconsin Chamber Orchestra. Mm -hmm. I keep working with a lot of Western orchestras, and you know, then I keep you know, arranging music of Tyagaraja, Purandaraja, mm -hmm. or something which could be, in some words, considered mm -hmm. Hindu music and mm -hmm. those kind of things, right? But it's not the intent. There is not to thrust Hinduism upon them or anything, or they it's are not, not going to be embrace the religion because mm -hmm. they are playing this. It's still an artistic exercise, it's an artistic collaboration. Mm -hmm. It's being done for the musical reasons. So, oh. so if beauty is your sole reason for mm -hmm. cross-cultural exploration, then nothing is uh, asked of it. And this has happened for quite some time. Muthuswami Dikshita took so many tunes oh, from yeah, Irish yeah. and Western and all that. Arunu in mm -hmm. my article I have mentioned, no? He beautifully uses the word Salam in his Tirupuhat. Mm -hmm. So, when they were doing it so beautifully, and there are several Islamic influences in Bharatanatyam also. Mm -hmm. You have certain compositions like, you know, Salam Daru, mm -hmm. uh, Jikini Daru and all these things, mm -hmm. which are from Islamic culture. So, a lot of this was happening, this cross-cultural interactions were happening. And uh, those were like, what I call as organic. Today, there are so many people who are uh, getting you know, converted to Hinduism in the West when mm -hmm. they go to some ashram, sure, and they do sure. all this kind of thing. So there, that is different from somebody actually paying them to convert into Hinduism. 
But then that brings us to the other thing that why sure. somebody is even being vulnerable enough to be done then there is something wrong with your own religion because your religion is not treating you well, you are not getting economic empowerment. So that's why you are doing this. So so the religion has to examine itself or if it wants to uh, stop this. So kind of many people may Aruna Saira made that point about organic conversion. People often and several other friends online made this point about the thing is there is so much myths about conversion. I don't yeah. want to turn this into a whole discussion on it. There are so many myths about it. But how little we know about the communities that convert. Yeah. And this goes back to the days of Gandhi himself. Right. Like the last mass conversion that happened in a real one that really became a topic was uh, in Meenakshi where mm -hmm. some nearly some 500, 600 people converted. Is that right? Meenakshi recent interviews, and the person said, why did you get converted? You lost reservation benefits. They lose it. Right. Reservation benefits is the biggest benefit for that community. Right. And they lose it. And he said, it's okay. You know what I gained? I gained self-respect because as a Hindu and as from a community, I cannot sit in a bus. Right. A 10-year-old boy from an upper caste, not Brahmin, Again, the people always equate the caste yeah, yeah, with Brahmin. Yeah, yeah. Every one either. in the pyramid is guilty yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And he said, a 10-year-old boy can make me get up. But as Abdul Qadir, mm -hmm. I get the right to sit. Right. This was happening in the 80s in Tamil Nadu, in a city, a prominent city. Right. Right. We don't know. What we know is that 500 people got converted. And then the recidivism, some of them actually converted back. Right, right. It's so complex, right. and when we talk about, oh, so much came out during the Carnatic music controversy, the funny part is, some of the people who are protesting this did, would not have spent a penny in their lifetime getting a Carnatic music CD. Right, exactly, that's the whole thing. Yeah. They were just jumping on a bandwagon. Yeah. These people would not have stopped by Music Academy for a concert. These people would not have bought a single CD. Yeah. Carnatic music is not their objective. That's the whole thing, yeah, yeah. The, the, the that's thing not their uh, objective. And bandwagonism has become rampant because of social media, right? Yes. See, much of this is much of this wouldn't have even made this amount of waves, but for social media. Mm -hmm. See, the internal reasons why a religion is allowing this to happen, treating. Mm -hmm its own people bad is something that a religion has to examine internally but that still does not justify somebody some outsider coming and uh, making use of that uh, opportunistically to pad up their numbers by throwing in some money and converting people so those are two different issues that we are talking I about. have so this takes me to the other question that I have from your specific article okay uh, your particular line that frankly that troubled me was you said uh, Christians are like four to six percent, or maybe a little bit more. That's all the, uh, the total population of Christian population in India by the census is six percent or something. Okay. And the way you had written is they form a formidable six percent. What is formidable about six percent? Did they write that? I don't remember that. Yes, <laughs> that one really troubled me because I was like, what is Ravi Kiran trying to say here? Because uh, when you say formidable, it's not 10%. It's not even 10%. That's no, the worst I, part. I, I, I want to read that before I answer that. Okay. Because I have completely forgotten. Uh, uh, to be honest, yes, this the rise of Pentecostal churches has created friction in communities. I know friends who talk about it, and I know the propaganda that goes in some of those communities. It's a whole different issue that needs to be talked about academically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I see stuff like, oh my God, they're calling this, or they took away this uh, arati and then they're having Vajastambha. Yeah, Some of that actually comes from good intentions. So there was a debate within the Vatican, within Catholic Church, right. which said we should relate to the local communities. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. Now that takes me to a different question, moving away from that controversy. Mm -hmm. And let me phrase this question carefully. What does religion mean to you, to your art? No, I think uh, being Carnatic is completely different. Being Hindu is completely different. If mm -hmm. it happens to be, you know, mm -hmm. there, then it is that it is just there. It's just a fact of life. It's part of it. 
But Kannadi can be appreciated just at the emotive level or the intellectual level, devoid of the spiritual or the religious element. Okay. And I personally think that, uh, you know, the spiritual one is a very, very individualistic and a private part of any mm -hmm. individual most of the time, unless you want to make it a profession. So otherwise, I think I am not, I'm, I'm probably spiritualistic, but I'm not ritualistic. Yes. So, you know, so I personally do not see that I'm weighed down by Carnatic representing mm -hmm. uh, the literature representing a lot of religious things mm -hmm. because the music is really beyond it and that's why I also you have to look at some of the compositions themselves many times you may not identify with exactly what the composer is saying mm -hmm. because some of it is autobiographical some of it is mm -hmm. specific to that composer's thought process but at the same time the musical value of the composition is fantastic then you can still interpret the piece in a non-religious or abu religious, mm -hmm. super religious manner no. So, so the beauty of the system is not to do with the religion, but the religion has been packaged by the system. Mm -hmm. So that's all there is to it. Because for me, the beauty is that in Western classical, they are so happy to take even the sacred part of the music mm -hmm. and perform it in a secular manner and yeah. not question about yes. who's performing it or where it is performed whether the person performing it can even emote. That question doesn't even come. Whether a person can emote in the spiritual context, and unless you wear the outward caste marks, and many of these singers themselves, right, in their daily lives, they don't wear their caste marks. Mm -hmm. But when they go on stage, they make it a point to wear their caste marks. It's almost like sending a telegram saying like, I belong to this fraternity, I am of this community, and therefore when I sing this, take it, understand it, that I have understood it. Yeah, see, that is one, that's one thing that I personally do not uh, take, that just because you are singing some of the spiritual things, there is a huge amount of expectation on the audience side also, that you have to live up to those ideals yourself as mm -hmm. a human being. Many times human beings are not judged as human beings itself because they have practiced Carnatic music. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a musician at the end of the day is a human being. He's a human being, he's interpreting some beautiful things, he's, he's being a vehicle of experience for you in a particular mm -hmm. way. Maybe he's able to bring that spirituality on the stage, but he may not be able to carry it off the stage. Mm -hmm. There are so many complex issues involved in every human being psyche, right? So on stage you can become completely in a different zone than you are part with the God mm -hmm. yourself. I mean, when I say God, it doesn't mean a religious God. Understood. So, but, God head. Yes. So, so it, it doesn't have to carry. Once you come down from the stage, you may be back to your human thing. Mm -hmm. So, to exert that kind of uh, an implied or a direct uh, pressure on an artist that he has to be in a particular way mm -hmm. at all times of his life, just because he is also being a karate performer and all that, those kind of religious expectations should not be there. Mm -hmm. People should be treated as what they are taken with uh, their whole package as such. So finally, question of legacy. Mm -hmm. What do you think? You are a singer and an instrumentalist, but you are probably known more as an instrumentalist, primarily because of the uniqueness of your instrument. Mm -hmm. And where do you see yourself talked about 20 years from now, 30 years from now, after you, what happens to Chitravina after you? And do you have ideas of branching out, like beyond even the middle harmony, right? Taking contemporary compositions of poetry. And this takes to the earlier point you were making about Bharati, right? Bharati, for obvious reasons, has now been co opted onto the Karnataka stage. Mm -hmm. Nobody touches Bharati Rasa, mm -hmm. at least not to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then nobody touches contemporary poetry. Now some attempts are being made. Yeah, now, yeah. Do you see yourself doing anything like that? So legacy, current, uh, any other experimental approaches to contemporary? No, again, if it happens, it happens. Mm -hmm. See, for me, the internal compulsion is the first and foremost, okay. you know, guiding light. Mm -hmm. So I did not venture into melharmony because I thought about creating a legacy. I did not go into say, bringing Uthakad and Venkatakavi's compositions. Mm -hmm. Because of anything, there is no agenda to whatever I have done. 
but at the same time that said whatever i have taken up i need to sort of continue mm-hmm. that's a first priority i cannot let those go half way through because melamani for all its um, things that's happening currently mm-hmm. i still have another 30 40 years of vision for it mm-hmm. where i have to take it further i have to do lots more with it so that is there on one side chitra vena and vocal violin so my students range from mm-hmm. the entire thing right so even keyboard i have students who are training me mm. and training under me in all those things so whatever it is i need to make sure that ultimately i am only communicating music whatever uh, instrument that they choose to express it is their choice so the legacy of good students bringing you know preserving and projecting good values that is one part of it second thing my own evolution as a musician and composer as a student of the art that's hopefully to be continued mm-hmm. in the best possible manner and most of all if i'm able to contribute positively and be relevant to society and make a good difference mm-hmm. that's ultimately the goal so as long as i'm there and if some of those goals are able to outlive me some of those activities of mine and the contributions if they are able to outlive me then that's good i'll be happy about it and where do you think it will be mel harmony or no it will be a combination of all these things because there mm-hmm. are different people who may be carrying on different things right Okay. Because melomony is a separate subject. It needs a different kind of approach to uh, it because people need knowledge of both Indian and Western classical or jazz mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. other systems of music to be good in melomony. Mm-hmm. You cannot just be only in Carnatic and still be good in melomony. Mm-hmm. You need some knowledge of both systems. So, a lot of the children here, the Indian kids who are also studying Western, mm-hmm. are excellent candidates to carry forward that part of okay. the legacy. Okay. so you would look at probably three key areas right one the instrument no harmony and then your students and your propagating your what you call the bani or whatever you know the rare compositions of works the hidden mm-hmm. works of uh, great composers okay. it could be anything see ultimately there is going to be part of the thing and in my case whatever i'm inspired to present i keep presenting i keep mm-hmm. teaching the same things so my students are uh, you know taking it up and then they are doing some of the work mm-hmm. for example this site on utkar venkata kavi is mm-hmm. really initiated and managed by my disciple bhargavi bal subramaniam mm-hmm. manita is doing a lot for melamani sure and there are several other students who are excellent performers who are on stage mm-hmm. doing all this and uh, you know so like this uh, things are happening organically and second thing my own musical legacy as a, as a performer ultimately the number of songs that i have played which hmm. uh, you know touch the hearts of people and if they are able to touch the brains of you know people so that is a legacy mm-hmm. and uh, i am also passionate as a vocalist by the way yes. i just don't have the time to sing Th- that's why i said you're mm-hmm. known more as an instrumentalist but then you have this other side as a vocalist yes vocalist and then my own compositions mm-hmm. see i have composed about 800 songs so far mm-hmm. which is uh, you no know, different languages so i am able to bring out all of them out if my okay. youtube channel probably has about 80 to 100 and that still there are some so many others which i have to bring out and there is a google doc with about mm-hmm. hundred and a few hundred lyrics is mm-hmm. there some of no some are not edited some books are there some dvds are there mm-hmm. so a lot of work on that front also wonderful so and then in the meantime i may be inspired to compose more so the work keeps going on so and you're still young hopefully god's grace Just told you. Come on. Yeah. What? Uh, uh, probably fifty plus. Fifty-two. I'll that's be a, another couple of years. Is that the new thirty? Hopefully. <laughs> Wish you many more years. And thank you. So thank much. you very much.